Congratulations to the flag. Nice to see you, man. The team is talking about the witch's stance. One nation under God. Indivisible, liberty, and justice. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. I have before me certification from the clerk that this meeting is being held in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Present. Here. Present. Here. 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 And, and before we start, President Watson is absent because today she is celebrating a very special, special anniversary. And I know you all joining, you all join with me in wishing her and her husband, Lou, a very, very special happy anniversary. <laughs> the clerk wants me to tell you that she's married 60 years. Oh, yeah. Wow. That is a wow. Is a wow. <laughs> Madam Clerk, are there any transcri transcripts to be approved? Uh, yes. Uh, conference board meeting, uh, May 28th, 2014. Freeholders, do you have any questions or comments? If none, do I have a motion and a second to approve the transcript? I'll move it. Second. Moved by Freeholder Johnson, second by Freeholder Owens. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Before we start uh, uh, having the roll call, I'd like to announce that Freeholder Beasley has now joined us. All right, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Beasley. Yes. Freeholder Bobadilla. Yes. Freeholder Clark. Yes. Freeholder Gill, absent. Freeholder Johnson. Yes. Freeholder Luciano. Yes. Freeholder Owens. Yes. Freeholder Vice President Siebel. Yes. So moved. And Freeholder President Watson is absent. We now move to the public comments session on agenda items. Tonight's meeting is a combined conference board meeting, and we will vote on every item on the agenda. So if there is any member of the public who would like to comment on any agenda item, please come to the microphone, state your name and affiliation for the record, and you have three minutes to speak, and we will let you know when you have 30 seconds left. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. Maybe I can't hear myself. Um, I just have some questions about um, resolution number 13 about the insertion of items of revenue from the state of New Jersey regarding labor and workforce. I'm sorry, did you put your name on oh, the record sorry. for My us, please? I'm sorry, my name is Viva White. My affiliation is that I'm a resident of Essex County. Um, and it was number 21, resolution number 13. I, would want, I just wondered how much is actually used for training because when I speak with people in the community and when they are recipients of Work First, they always say that there's really no money that's available to them for training. Um, item number 26, um, resolution number 18, um, and also resolution number 19, um, item number 27, Will the manual be made public in regards to this? A, a, um, looks like a policies and procedure manual for the implementation. One of Home Investment Partnerships Program, Essex County Consortium, and also implementation of the Community Development Block Grant. On um, resolution number 20, number 28, um, I just wonder what is extension of a sub-recipient agreement is under the Department of Economic Development, Training, and Employment Division. It's just not clarified um, what is the sub-recipient of the community block program. And 
Number 34 and 39 about um, resolution number 26 and resolution number 31. It says about um, bid will be given to the two lowest responsive and responsible um, bidders, but I wanted to know in other resolutions these bidders are named, and I wanted to know when it will be named before these are given to these individuals, the two lowest persons. So that's all I would like to say. Thank you very much. As a general rule, we do not comment at a free elder meeting, but you will receive a response to your questions in writing probably within a week. And all your questions have been recorded. Is there anyone else from the public who would like to speak about an agenda item? Your name, Good evening. please, and affiliation. My name is David Dutcher, and I am a business representative of IBW Local 1158. First, I'd like to thank you all for taking time to hear the concerns of your employees. Under the direction of Joe Calabro, who unfortunately could not be here tonight. Mr. Dector, I, yes. Dector, I'll have to interrupt you for just one second. I'm sorry, sure. and then you can start again. I have a copy of what you're prepared to say. Yes. Generally, we allow three minutes for each person who comes before us to speak. And I went through this. It looks like it might be a little bit longer than three minutes. And this is a very special uh, uh, reason why you are here. So if it goes over a little bit, we'll give you a little extra time. And I appreciate that. Now you can start. Thank you. Thank you. IBW works tirelessly to represent the bulk of the employees here in Essex County. We are here to bring to your attention a matter that our business manager, Joe Calabro, has been addressing for more than five years with the administration. IBW represents a large number of employees in the Department of Citizen Services, while our union brothers and sisters from CWA represent the rest. Over the years, our employees have repeatedly been asked to do more with less and have risen to the challenge. The staffing levels throughout the county are down by about 35 percent, <clears throat> yet the workload has expanded in citizen services by about 60 percent and is projected to go much higher. Unfortunately, over the years, a serious pay disparity has occurred. The members of IBW who are asked to leave the county welfare division to help the county develop its employment and training unit are earning anywhere from $8,000 to $26,000 less than their counterparts performing the same tasks in the welfare division. For the record, our brothers and sisters were told that their salaries would be adjusted to match their counterparts when they accepted these positions. They were told, quote, just give us a little time and get this section up and running. To illustrate our point, in 2003, when the employment specialists chose Local 1158 to represent them, there was a very clear disparity between the salaries of a family service worker in welfare and employment specialists in the Department of Training and Employment. This administration, in concert with Joe Calabro, identified this gross disparity and developed an aggressive action plan that brought 70 employees of DTE up to par with their counterparts of welfare within three years. IBW acknowledges and applauds the administration for this. Unfortunately, many of the manager titles were not in place then, and the disparity has never been addressed. So in many cases, the subordinate salaries are equal to their supervisors and or managers. Let it be clear, we're talking about a handful of people, 10 to 15 at most. Our IBW employees who deal with clients after they have been certified by welfare walk them through the entire training process. Calm clients who have been sanctioned, deal with every increasing caseload, ever increasing caseloads, and extremely angry, angry members of the public, all while remaining calm and professional despite the fact that they know they are being paid significantly less than their counterparts. Let me make it perfectly clear that we take nothing away from our brothers and sisters in CWA, and as they work equally as hard and diligently as our members, this is kind of our point, equal pay for equal work. We have addressed this matter a number of times with the administration, only to be told it needs to be addressed during negotiations. When we go to negotiation, the negotiations, the administration says, they cannot deal with issues that pertain to specific groups. It has to be the entire membership. We have employees who are actively looking for other employment. And if anyone here believes that you could just simply hire someone to fill their shoes, I have really bad news for you. The institutional knowledge these employees possess is walking out the door. The ability to know who to call and how to solve a problem or how to calm a client is immeasurable. 
I can't tell you how many times situations at 50 South Clinton would have erupted into violence if not for the dedication and know-how of our members. I can tell you it happens almost on a daily basis. We know that there is no one-shot solution to fix these problems, but we are asking the freeholders to convene your Labor Oversight Committee specifically for the purpose to begin to find a solution for this problem. As the population in need of assistance grows here in Essex County, so does the need to have experienced, dedicated professionals on staff to deal with and service the clients. I'm sure you've all seen or heard about the lines of 50 South Clinton that stretch over a block or more at times. The county over the years has found itself under a number of consent decrees as the public complained about lack of service. Due to this administration's credit, it has worked to resolve those issues to a large part. IBW wants to work with this board and the administration to continue to put and keep Essex County first. The way to do that is to treat these members and their concerns with dignity and the respect that they have earned. These members you see here today and their families deserve at least this much. IBW and his members stand ready to appear before your committee to begin the dialogue. On behalf of Joe Calabro, our business manager, I thank the board for your time. And I thank you so much for your comments. We each have a copy of what you stated tonight, and you will receive, a, 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 you will receive information in writing from the Freeholder Board probably within a week. And all of your comments were, were very, very informative. And I thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Hmm? Is there anyone else from the public who wishes to speak at this time? If so, please come to the microphone, state your name, your affiliation, and again, you will have three minutes. Good evening. My name is Joe Barr. I am a senior employment specialist within the Depart Division of Training and Employment. I began my career with the County of Essex in 1994 at the Division of Welfare as a family service worker. And in 1999, I was laid off by the Treffordshire administration. And it was during that time that I was fortunate to land a provisional provision position within the Division of Training and Employment as an employment specialist. In 2001, I accepted a permanent position within Division of Training and Employment. After bouncing back and forth between welfare and DTE, I decided to become an employment specialist because I believe in helping people get off of public assistance. And we know that that stymies their independence and it limits their contribution to our community. DTE services has made a powerful impact on all of our communities throughout Essex County. When I came to DTE directly from welfare, I was made to believe that my employment is valuable and that my service is appreciated. A matter of fact, I was literally recruited by the division director at the time it was Ms. Linda Williams staff to return to Division of Training and Employment from Welfare. Unfortunately, I have learned during the past two contract negotiation periods that this is not the case. My union was told, was, was told that talks on salary parity for senior employment specialists can and will be discussed during the contract negotiation period. However, the county executive staff refused to discuss salary parity for senior employment specialists and other titles that are similar with my union. Lastly, I am a registered Democrat, and I believe and expect in the democratic process to prevail in every instance. DTE is only one-fifth the size of welfare, and I'm advising your county, I'm advising you that our county executive has not treated the least of his employees with the respect and dignity that we deserve. I ask you, the board, our board of chosen freeholders, to investigate and to intervene on the behalf of the least of your employees. Thank you. Thank you very much and thank you for your comments and questions. Is there anyone else from the public who would like to speak? <clears throat> Seeing none, we will proceed further. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, are there any topics of discussion? Madam Chair, there is none. Thank you. We now move to resolutions one through five, and you may read them into a record at a later time. Mr. Chiella. 
Will you please explain the resolutions, one through five? Uh, thank you, Madam uh, Chair. Uh, they are all coming out of the Office of County Counsel. They are all agreements. Uh, uh, the first is with the uh, Essex County Prosecutor's Office. Uh, I'll run through them briefly, and then I'll ask our, our, our uh, counsel, Dep uh, Dolores Capitola, to come up and explain uh, the, 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 the crux of, of each of the uh, negotiations. Uh, they all pretty much follow the same pattern. They're four-year agreements, 2% uh, each year for the uh, first resolution, which is the uh, uh, International Electrical Brothers, uh, elect Electrical Workers, election, uh, Local 1158, Prosecutor's Clerical Office. Uh, we have the Communication Workers, Local 1081. We have the Communication Workers, 1081, the Professionals. We have the Public Employee Supervisors Administration. And we also have the uh, Public Service Employees Union uh, Supervisors. Um, and it's followed, um, and those are the six. I'll have Ms. Capitola come up. I would like to just uh, mention to the board that Ms. Capitola is in her 33rd year right. of service to the County of Essex. Uh, she will be retiring around the 1st of August. Uh, we will miss her dearly. Uh, we, we do have someone who is uh, pretty much shadowing uh, Ms. Capitola uh, that will take over her responsibilities once Ms. Capitola retires. Uh, but we are uh, looking to fill very large shoes with uh, Ms. Capitola. And at this time, I'd like to invite her up to the mic as, as well as Ms. Grace Spencer. Thank you, Mr. Chiella. And you took the words right out of my mouth because I was going to say that unfortunately we're going to be losing Dolores Capitola because she is retiring effective August 1st from the Office of County Council and she has done an absolutely wonderful job for all the years that she has been working here. I'm sure she will teach Grace Spencer to follow in her footsteps and keep up the wonderful work and we wish you well Dolores. Thank you and thank you for your kind words I appreciate it. Um, Dolores Capitola, Office of the County Council. Uh, the first contract is with the Prosecutor's Clerical Unit. It's a four-year agreement. Uh, wages are June 1st, 2%, 2014, and the next three years, January 1st, 2% each year. Continuation of the increment program, Chapter 78, Language. Uh, the uh, next agreement Could you is please speak into the microphone? Yes, I'm sorry. We're having a little trouble picking okay. it up. Okay. The next contract is with the CWA Local 1081 Clericals. Again, a four-year agreement, January June 1st, 2014, a 2% increase. January 1st, 2015, 16 and 17, also a 2% increase. Continuation of the increment program, Chapter 78 language, and a change in the ability to earn time, to use your earn time Instead of just a full day or half a day, it's now also a quarter or three-quarter day. Uh, exact same terms for the next contract, which is CWA Local 1081 with the professionals. Uh, the third agreement is with the PESU, that's the Supervisors Union at, at Welfare. The wages are the same, June 1st, a 2% increase. January 1st, 2015, 16 and 17, also a 2% increase. Continuation of the increment program, the Chapter 78 language that we have, uh, that we put in the other contracts that uh, came before the board earlier this year, and also that same earn time change. And that is the same for the administrators and the supervisors in PESU. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for all your hard work. Okay, thank you. And I'll just introduce Grace Spencer. She'll be replacing me at the end of, uh, starting at August 1st. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Chair. Wait a second. Dolores, don't go too far. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, I thought you were going to ask uh, uh, Assemblywoman Spencer to say hello. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. My, my apologies. Um, this is certainly Ms. Capitola's uh, moment, and this is her, her day, and um, I don't want to take any way, anything away from that. Recognizing that she does have large shoes to fill, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to be a part of the county government and to continue providing the same service that she has provided for this for almost hopefully as long as she has 33 years that's an awful long period of time but um, certainly I hope that my tenure here is as um, as good as the one that she's had thank you well, thank you and welcome to the county staff 
Um, I just had a question, Mr. Ms. Capitola. Mr. Parlevecchio, questions, comments? Yeah, just a quick one, Ms. Capitola. Um, I, it's common in all of these uh, agreements. The change in the use of the earned time, mm -hmm. can you just explain that? I, I yes. know we talked about it offline, but I, I think it's uh, a novel approach. I think it's something that benefits both sides of the, uh, okay. of the table on this. Um, earned time would include uh, sick time, vacation time, comp time. Uh, right now, at least with vacation and sick time and personal days, you have to take either a half a day or a full day. So if you have a doctor's appointment, you have to, instead of just being able to leave an hour early, you have to take a whole, a half a day, which means the employee loses time and we, use, we lose the benefit of having the employee work for the, the other three hours. So if you have to leave an hour earlier or two hours earlier, now you can take a quarter day or if you have a doctor's appointment or, or a family emergency, whatever, uh, and you don't want to take a full day, you can take three quarters of a day. So uh, I think it benefits the employee and it also benefits us because we have uh, more ability to staff our facilities. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mr. Parlovecchio, any additional comments or questions? No, my only comment is a personal one that uh, my dealings with uh, Ms. Capitola and her role here uh, have always been um, ex excellent and outstanding. She always provides the information we're looking for. She is a really uh, outstanding professional, a wonderful person individually, and uh, she will be sorely missed for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parlovecchio. Thank you. Mr. McInerney. I, 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 Questions, I, I, comments? I, I, certainly. Not, not, I think the resolutions speak for themselves, but I'd be remiss in working with Dolores for the last 27 years um, not to say something. So I, too, wish her luck in the future and life after the county. She's been a tremendous help to this board and uh, has approached every, everything she's done for the board with a great amount of professionalism and, and uh, dignity. And uh, best of luck. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Freeholders, questions, comments? Freeholder Clark. One question and one comment. Um, the, the group of um, employees who were just here, is there? No. Con it's Their not, contract is, is it's not, not in here. Okay. They're uh, represented by IBW in a separate unit. Okay. Uh, now, just to say that it's been a pleasure um, working with you. Um, all of these years, at one point in time, working as a part of the administration and then certainly working as a member of this Board of Chosen Freeholders. I wish you only the best. Thank I'm you. I'm glad that you're um, fit as a fiddle okay. and that you're, you're still healthy and sharp and vibrant and you still have some gas left in the tank for you to be able to really, really enjoy your, your retirement uh, with good health. Um, and, and just wonderful vibes. So thank you for your service, and God bless you and Godspeed. Thank you, and thank you for the opportunity to work with this board. It's always been a pleasure and a, a joy. Thank you. Freeholders, any additional comments or questions? If not, that means we have to have a motion for a vote. I'll move it. For resolutions one through five. For resolutions one through five. I'll move it. I'll second. Okay, moved by Freeholder Luciano, second by Freeholder Bovadia. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Yes. Uh, Freeholder Owens? Yes. Freeholder Luciano? Yes. Freeholder Johnson? Yes. Freeholder Gill, absent Freeholder Clark? Yes. Freeholder Bovadia? Yes. Freeholder Beasley? Yes. Freeholder Vice President Sebo? Yes. Freeholder President Watson, absent. Madam Clerk, we now move to resolutions 6 through 12, and you can read them into a rec the record at a later time. And we will uh, have um, we'll have Mr. Giella explain resolutions 6 through 12. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, 6 through 11 are actually all insurance related. Uh, with us, we have. Uh, our new risk manager. I'm sorry, uh, it's through 11. I made a mistake. Go ahead. Uh, we, we have no, Mr. No, he just corrected me. I'm sorry. 
Okay, I made an adjustment. Great. <laughs> um, they all are insurance-related matters. Uh, our risk manager, uh, Ike Jenkins, is here, and rather than uh, recite what the, each one uh, policy uh, will cover and the rates, I will ask Mr. Jenkins to come up. We also have representatives uh, from our brokerage firm uh, to answer any additional questions that the board may have on the various insurance coverages. Uh, he'll go over uh, the, the coverage, uh, the premium, if it's an increase or a decrease over last year, and if there are any major changes in the coverage. Uh, Mr. Jenkins. Thank you. Good evening, Madam President, Board of Children for your orders. I will begin with the uh, excess general auto and law enforcement liability mm -hmm. policies. Uh, presented by uh, or Give provided your name, by please, and your affiliation for the record. I'm sorry. And see if you can speak into the mic a little more. I'm sorry. Ike Jenkins, County Risk Manager. Thank you. Ike Jenkins, County Risk Manager. I'll begin with the excess general automobile and law enforcement um, liability policies provided by Brit Insurance. This is a hybrid policy that provides protection against claims for bodily injury and, and property damage arising out of premises, operations, products, and completed operations, as well as torts, uh, as well as financial loss due to legal liability for auto-related injuries to others or damage to the properties, as well as errors and omission uh, coverage for county law enforcement uh, departments. Uh, we saw this year a premium decrease from $450,467 to $450,250, which represents a 0.05% decrease. Other than that, there were no other changes in terms and conditions for this particular policy. Moving on to uh, the excess workers' comp program provided by ACE Insurance. Uh, this is a program that provides coverage for the county's two key exposures, part one and two, arising out of injuries and illnesses uh, sustained by employees. Uh, premium increases here uh, went from $345,690 to $360,858, which represents a 4.3% increase over the expiring policy. Uh, with exception to an increased limit in the employer's practice liability limit, uh, we saw no other changes in this policy uh, in terms of terms and conditions. Uh, moving on to the commercial property uh, policy that's provided by Affiliated FM. Uh, this policy provides protection against uh, most risk with respect to property such as fire, some weather-related uh, perils, and business income loss. Here we saw a premium increase from $367,240 to $418,486, uh, which represents a 14% increase in premium. With the exception of premium, uh, cost of premium, policy limits and sublimits, applicability of the deductibles and addition of two high hazard locations, there were no other changes in terms and conditions for this policy. The medical professional liability policy, which is uh, provided by One Beacon Insurance, uh, protects from allegations of inadequate quick care or failure to render proper care uh, that's rendered by the uh, Essex County Hospital um, Center's medical professionals. Here, no change in premium at $130,000, nor terms or conditions. Next is the public officials, EPL, and employed uh, lawyer liability policy, which is provided by ACE Insurance. This is a policy that provides liability coverage for errors and omissions of public officials, as well as employee-related claims, employment-related claims. Uh, here we saw a premium increase from $108,329 to $111,145. Again, no changes in terms and conditions. And lastly, the pollution liability policy, which is provided by ACE Insurance, protects from allegations of environmental exposure and contamination associated with county operations. Uh, again, no change in premium, $25,633, uh, no terms or conditions. And that concludes the uh, presentation of the policies. Thank you. Mr. Parlevec, do you have any questions? Uh, do you have any comments about no, any of the I don't items? I have any questions. Uh, I know Mr. Jenkins provided me uh, with some information on that last resolution, um, number 11, from the county's 